A disgraced district attorney faces a new fight, whether to pay back taxpayers for the money she used to defend her misconduct. Looks like some wild personalized plates are making it through the state's screening system. The latest claim about a Venezuelan gang in Aurora seems to be a misunderstanding of a TikTok video that appears to be making fun of the anti-migrant hysteria. He's biked around the world and says he's found something special in Colorado. How many people see the road like that? Meter by meter on the bike. And let's boost a school district's effort to put a food pantry in every school, making sure that extra cafeteria food goes home to hungry families. Because you don't just watch, because this is next. Republican District Attorney Linda Stanley has problems. First off, she won't be DA for long, not after getting disbarred for misconduct. Can't hold that job without a law license. Also, DA Stanley used taxpayer funds to unsuccessfully defend herself, and now she may have to pay that money back. Our Mark Salinger literally has the receipts. The checks total more than $50,000, all written from the same checkbook, belonging to the office of the district attorney of the 11th Judicial District. May fees, April attorney, February legal fees, the checks read. The taxpayer money from the office budget all went to a lawyer representing DA Linda Stanley in her legal battle over ethics violations. My name is Linda Stanley. I'm the district attorney for the 11th Judicial District. Stanley brought murder charges against Barry Morphew in 2021 after his wife Suzanne went missing outside of Salida. Her handling of the case and others eventually led to her losing her law license last week after a trial in front of a branch of the Colorado Supreme Court. She was accused of launching a secret investigation into the judge overseeing the Morphew case and making inappropriate comments about other cases. He's watching that baby so he can get laid. That's it. Without the caring factor, without the love factor, then it's the baby's a pain in the Because of that Supreme Court ruling, Fremont County commissioners are now seeking repayment of up to $53,000 of taxpayer money that Stanley spent on her legal defense. Those legal fees cannot lawfully be paid from funds appropriated by the county for the operation of your office. A letter written to Stanley by county commissioner states, if she won the ethics case, county commissioners say she could have requested to have the county pay the legal fees. Since she lost, commissioners say they intend to recover all misappropriated funds from Linda Stanley. So we wanted to ask Linda Stanley why she used money from her office budget to pay her legal bills. Her lawyer, who she is paying using that taxpayer money, told me that he's advised her not to talk with us since the last time that she did interviews. It in part led to her being disbarred. Her lawyer says she will appeal the ruling and she is evaluating whether or not she will resign as district attorney. Almost seems like a silly question, but does the lawyer getting paid with taxpayer money say it's okay that they're getting paid with taxpayer money? So quote, he told me it is a complex and unsettled legal issue. Hmm. But he says that since she was found that she didn't violate certain parts of the ethics complaints, then she shouldn't have to repay that money. It's just, how do you boil down what part of the money you have to repay and what part you don't? The county commissioner is still looking into all that. All right, Mark Salinger, thank you. The latest viral claim about a Venezuelan gang in Aurora has millions of views online, and it was repeated by a KOA radio host this week. But the claim comes from a TikTok video that appears to be satirizing anti-migrant hysteria in Aurora. This TikTok video shows a truck stop as a man claims that Venezuelan gang members are extorting truckers in Aurora for $50 to park for the night. The guy says, that he saw 18 Venezuelans pile out of an SUV and that he knew they were Venezuelan gang members because they had the words Venezuelan gang member tattooed on their arm. He uh, pulled up his shirt, showed me his pew pew, and he had he had a uh, Venezuelan gang member tattooed on his forearm, so I know he was a Venezuelan gang member. As some TikTok users took this claim seriously, the video creator posted in the comments that it was a, quote, cranium thickness test. But weeks after the video was originally posted, an anonymous right wing X account reposted the video. It racked up 3 million views on X and ended up getting repeated by KOA host Mandy Connell this week. An American trucker who says that he was parked at a lot in Aurora when a group of Venezuelan gang members rolled up into the lot and went truck for, to truck demanding $50 or they were going to be sorry in the morning. 
One guy didn't pay. All of his tires are flat the next morning. All of the tires. After Donald Trump began repeating claims that Aurora has been taken over by a Venezuelan gang, city leaders and police put out a joint statement saying that this gang's activity is isolated to a few properties. Ten suspected gang members have been identified in the last month. Aurora police told us today they have seen zero evidence of truck stop shakedowns, as described in that video, which again appears to actually be a parody of anti-migrant hysteria. So for years here on Next, we've been telling you if you eat right and you exercise, you just might live long enough to see RTD complete its train to Longmont. Taxpayers started paying for that train line in 2004. RTD's been saying they can't complete the project until the year 2050. Tonight, an update. RTD says it can get bare bones service running, few trains a day, by 2042 at the earliest. Remember the countdown that we used to have? We haven't pulled this sucker out in years. But the countdown to RTD's train to Longmont has now ticked down considerably to 6,314 days. That's what taking eight years off will do for you. Tonight, the RTD board is considering a new study that will look at what it's going to take to get a train to Longmont as a reality. The study suggests the full service model originally promised to voters, trains every 15 minutes, that's out of the question. The new study proposes just three trips in the morning, three trips in the evening. Turns out even that will cost an estimated 650 mil with a completion date somewhere between 2042 and 2048. RTD is trying to convince state and local governments that the better plan is to roll in this dream of a Longmont line into the much larger plan for front range rail that would go all the way from Fort Collins to Pueblo. Speaking of odd obsessions that we have shared on this program through the years, license plates. So way back in the beginning, you turned us on to how many cues were showing up on Colorado's new plates. It was because there was a change in the font that made the cues readable, so the state pumped out a ton of cue plates. More recently, you've been all about the plague of temporary expired tags on our roads. And today, a next viewer wants to know about some personalized plates that appear to have some decently offensive messages. And the DMV agreed with that judgment. Our Marshall Zellinger has that. License plates capture our attention. The ones that are expired, come on, F-150, two years. The ones that color coordinate and the ones that show colorful personality. Then there are the ones that a viewer sent us wanting to know why the Colorado Department of Motor Vehicles approved the personalization. Gassum on the back of this Tesla and Killery. The DMV did not want to interview about this, but told me after review, the department deeply apologizes for the oversight of these offensive plates. They will be recalled and the customers will be required to return them and choose another. The DMV said they were approved based on explanations provided on this form that vehicle owners must fill out when requesting a personalized plate. Every year, the DMV puts out a list of rejected personalized plate requests. Two years ago, the DMV rejected booby, a term for a Jewish grandmother. When asked why, the DMV could not find the reason other than it was already on the offensive or omit list, like the word vote. Why? What's wrong with vote? According to the DMV, 40,000 four-letter words are not allowed because the state has combinations of four letters and two numbers. So vote 01 and vote 02 will never be randomly issued. So vote itself is not allowed either. The word lesbian is also on the omit list. So is the word gay. The DMV said they were put on the do not issue list two system conversions ago, and the department is open to removing them from the list. There are plenty of combinations drivers have asked for and been rejected. Got to pee was kicked out for being offensive, as was zero fox given. Fox. If I'm going to go out, this is what it's going to be. Uh, what, what about the combinations that are not automatically on the offensive or omit list but seem concerning? Turns out there are three DMV managers who review the submission, and the decision is made by a majority vote. One other four-letter word that is not allowed similar to vote, Kyle? Kyle. No. The word Kyle. Your name. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine what a piece of work I'd have to be to drive around with a license plate that said my own name? I mean, geez. Some people would be like, you probably already have it. I do not. Marshall, <laughs> thanks for all of the FOX given there. So there's this ambitious plan to put a small food bank into every Greeley Evans school building. 
34 of them, and the last ones go in this month. They're fighting hunger by getting food to families through students. Our Word of Thanks microgiving campaign this week will help the school district's nonprofit foundation arm stock up those food banks and get them up and running. This is such a smart idea. In part, it allows school cafeterias to repackage extra food that otherwise could be wasted by freezing it and then sending it home for students' families to enjoy. It allows kids whose parents work overnight in Greeley's meatpacking plant to grab dinner for them and their siblings. It keeps students and families fed through weekends and holidays. The Nonprofit Success Foundation says that putting food pantries in all 34 schools in the district has had another unexpected benefit. Family members coming in to utilize the food bank are now building new relationships at school and volunteering more often in classrooms. This truly is bringing the community together in Greeley and Evans. Scan the QR code on your screen or text the word thanks to 303-871-1491 to get that link to donate to the Success Foundation School Food Pantry Program in Greeley. Your millions of dollars in microgiving proves that even $5 adds up quick. So as always, I'll match the first 50 donations of $5 to get us going. And more than 3,000 of you are giving on a monthly basis to the Word of Thanks Fund. You set it up once, we divide your donations evenly among all the nonprofits we feature. And it means that we have started recent weekly campaigns with $22,000 for each nonprofit. Use the same QR code or text to get there. A world traveler has spent more than a decade seeing the sights on two wheels. And he says he's experienced something special in Colorado. This is the governor's limo. He's asleep. The governor's asleep in the back seat of the car. And farewell to a one of a kind journalist who spent decades on our air, but never lost his curiosity or that sense of humor. That's next. Hand crews are making progress against the Pearl Fire, which has been burning in northern Larimer County this week. Progress has been slow going, though, since high winds have grounded the air resources called in to help. That fire in the Crystal Lakes area did not spread today. It is still within its 128-acre boundary, and crews have about 5% containment. They're convinced that part's not going to get away from them again. The Larimer County Sheriff says only one small outbuilding has been damaged. That's on the property where that fire started. Meteorologist Lauren Robinson, that's probably a best case scenario that we could have hoped for after a, kind of a windy and stormy day yesterday. That's right, and we're going to expect more afternoon gusty conditions over the next few days, but the good news is winds are starting to calm down for this evening. So as we take a look over downtown Denver, we do have nice clear skies right now. A lot of sunshine, no me. We have um, 82 degrees at DIA and uh, winds coming in from the north at around 10 miles per hour. Now, as we take a look at our current wind gusts across the front range, you'll notice front range in eastern plains nice and calm. The foothills and high country seeing these winds gusting up to around 20 miles per hour in some areas, and this is the area where we're going to watch for that pearl fire. So those winds will continue to calm. That's the good news there. Another piece of good news is we're going to see a clear, cool evening tonight. These clear skies and calm winds are actually going to allow us to cool off into the 40s for most of the front range in eastern plains, 30s in the high country. Tomorrow afternoon, though, that sunshine returns the next few days. We're going to see these temperatures in the middle 80s, 60s and 70s in the foothills and mountains. So the next few days, these are your days to get outside and do those outdoor activities. Go leaf peeping, go for a bike ride. Temperatures will be beautiful in the middle 80s, nice and sunny. A little bit above our seasonal high of 79 degrees for this time of year, but that's going to be big changes moving in this weekend with those temperatures dropping. We're looking for widespread showers late Saturday into early Sunday. Ward Lucas was one of a kind. The longtime Nine News investigative reporter and anchor passed away on Sunday. Ward was a curious guy in a few ways, but always in the best sense of the word. He was happy to march to the beat of his own drum, to do things differently than other journalists, to pursue his own obscure interests as a reporter. And the man was deeply curious, as in he wondered about the world around him as a good journalist should, and he loved to share where his curiosity led. And Ward called BS as an investigative reporter in his own signature style, his meticulously written reports that were sometimes infuriating, sometimes heartbreaking, sometimes laugh out loud funny. Like when he investigated the claims of a faith healer who said he could levitate. Some people will believe anything. Levitation is one of them. Last year, our investigative team ran across photographs of Master Yogi Thomas levitating himself. We found him in a basement temple in South Chicago and asked if we could videotape him levitating. To our surprise, he agreed. 
After many minutes of intense concentration, he succeeded. Did you get those all right? Yes. Actually, it happened pretty quickly. <laughs> that was Ward Lucas, curious and funny. He was a fixture of this newsroom for 30 years until his retirement in 2009. He was so generous with his vast knowledge and guidance when I worked alongside him years ago. He'll be greatly missed, and he leaves a legacy that we all remember as a community. Ward Lucas was 75. Slowing down provides new perspective. If you don't believe me, try biking a route that you normally drive. You will see it in a whole new way. A man from Turkey set out to see the world that way. He's been doing it for 12 years, and he spent the last few weeks in Colorado. In Turkey, people call me the man with iron horse. I can survive my life with this bike. My name is Gürkan Genç. I started my world tour by bicycle 2012. 78 countries, more than 81,000 miles finished now. I feel good, really. Talk about this trip with people, yeah, they shocked a little and they ask why? And I say, why not? Why not? We have only one life, come on. Nice photos, wait a minute. Where? Mesa Verde? Yeah, wait a minute. Ah, yes. My best place in the United States is Mesa Verde National Park. This is the best place for me. Why? Because there is a nice nature, good climbing, you can reach the water everywhere, and history. It was amazing. Most of the time when people saw me like that in the United States from Miami to here, when I said, hey, sorry, may I ask you a question? And people said, no, no, don't uh, ask me any question. Even from uh, Miami to Houston, nobody offered me any water on the road. People are afraid of me, actually. And it's changing Colorado. When they saw this setup, they said, wow, you are doing something great, I think. Where are you come from? So now I say the Colorado, is for me, is the number one state. I say that one day I am going to die, but I'm going to die a man who saw the world meter by meter. Wow. I don't know about you, I'm proud of the hospitality that our state has shown that man. We're back with your feedback next. There are small food pantries in every school in the Greeley Evans School District. They've been set up by the nonprofit foundation that supports projects the district otherwise couldn't afford. Long-term goals for each individual food pantry to have a community partner that donates to keep it continually stocked. But as the final food pantries come on board this month, we can do that initial lift. Scan the QR code on your screen or text the word thanks to 303-871-1491 to join me and other Coloradans in donating to the Success Foundation to support the food pantry project in the schools in Greeley and Evans. You can give to just this week's cause or sign up to make a monthly donation that will split evenly among all the nonprofits we feature. Ray says, thanks for making Next a great show. You did a story on the long rail going to Longmont eventually. He says, want to mention folks in Boulder, Louisville, and Broomfield are in the same boat. He says, we were promised long rail a long time ago. Chuck says, might be fun to take a picture of yourself and use that program to show how old you will look when RTD completes the line in 2042. I just hope I make it, Chuck. Every time I eat a vegetable or do a push-up, I just think, live to see that train. Live to see that train. <laughs>